Hi guys. Today we are sitting at what is called the Peel Ring of Lumfannon, which is a 13th century earthen fort. Now there would have been a castle here once upon a time, but right now it's literally just a hill. We'll show you footage of that. It's one of the early exa earliest examples of, um, of a wooden fort that would have existed um, during the 13th century and beyond. It's thought to be a natural formation that was dug out um, in the 13th century to make room for the fort. It's surrounded by a moat, which is pretty rare for castles here in Scotland. Most of the time they're built on high cliffs where it's a little hard to get to them, but moats weren't common um, for castles, especially wooden castles back in the day. There is no longer a castle here. There are some markers which we'll show you. And there was another house um, here as well uh, that was built after the fort was torn down, but it is also no longer here. I was going to say they, they believe that they took the stone from the castle in order to make the house, which is actually what we're sitting on at the moment. We are on the top of the peel ring, the, the mound in the center, and we are sitting on the footings, the foundation of that house. Uh, we also today go to um, the Macbeth Stone. There's some confusion about which rock it is that uh, we pass that is the Macbeth Stone, but we'll leave that alone for now. And uh, we might hit some other sites as well. So we are really nearby to a whole bunch of places that mark, uh, traditionally people believe, mark the uh, final days of the last Gallic King Macbeth. So I hope you will join us. We also will hit up a castle that's not very far from here um, in the same vicinity called Course Castle. Um, and we'll t talk about it a little bit later. As we seek a better way. Join us on the journey. Pill Ring of Lymphannon. It is an example of the earthworks associated with timber castles and it was one of the few, as we told you before, that was surrounded by a wet moat. At this site, Sir John de Melville, Lord of Rath, Ryath? Ryath. Lord of Ryath, sorry. Wraith? Wraith. Ryath, Wraith, this is one of the things we're learning. Potato. <laughs> uh, submitted to Edward I of England in 1296. This castle was abandoned shortly after, and the foundations of the medieval residence built on the summit of the castle mound can still be seen. So we'll show you that in a little bit. The Pill of Lymphannon is also known as the Pill Ring or Pill Bog of Lymphannon. It is a defensive structure dating back to the 13th century. It's located near Lymphannon, Scotland in Aberdeenshire, which is in the northeastern part of Scotland. The pill itself is compromised of a mound it's surrounded uh, by two centric, centri, cent, concentric, <laughs> concentric uh, ditches separated by a bank. The outer bank is about four meters high, so it's actually pretty tall for something that was built up. And the inner ditch, the moat, is 15 meters or 49 feet across. The outer ditch was described as shallow in the 1960s and it's now kind of difficult to discern. Although we can tell you as you walk on it, it's still quite boggy. Um, the top of the mound, there are remains of a one meter uh, thick wall. And we'll walk around to see if we can find that. We have, that's this one. Oh, that's this on. one. Yeah, okay. We're sitting on it. Awesome. Which was probably the, the, the beginning of the house. Yeah, this is the, the foundation the, to the house. The house that was built after the fort was destroyed. It was thought for a long time that the moat was in existence whenever Macbeth died in 1057. But they now don't believe that to, tr to be true because the actual fort itself was built in the 13th century. It could very well be that this was a natural mound created by nature and that it was surrounded by water but that there was not a fort here. There had not been a castle here at the time of Macbeth's death. The present mound was constructed in the 13th century by the D. London family who later adopted the name Durward from the hereditary position of royal ushers and doorwards. The Durwards used the peel as a lodge for hunting parties from their main residence at the Cool Castle. Sir John de Melville paid homage to Edward I of England at the peel in 1296. 
And um, so the, the only thing that exists now is, is the structure in which we're sitting on. King Macbeth was murdered. Now, we all know the Shakespearean story that that uh, no man of, of woman born may slay, Mac, may slay Macbeth, and we know how that turned out for him. And we also know that that happened uh, in um, on the hill of Dunsinane. But that's down in Fife, which is way south of where the real Macbeth uh, actually died, which is just over the hill behind uh, the camera now, uh, where there is a stone that at the end of the Battle of Lomphanan, the king was held down to this rock and they decapitated him. They then took his head and paraded it through Lomphanan and down around the way along the River Dee to a place called King Cardin O'Neill, where the future King Malcolm III was waiting to hear the results of the battle. When Macbeth died here in Limfanon in 1057, it was thought that he was buried um, at Macbeth Cairn. Now a cairn is like a structure built of rocks at the top of usually a hill or a mountain. Um, but he might have been buried there for a very short period of time, but he was then taken to Iona and buried with all the other rightful kings of Scotland. The cairn from where we're sitting is literally over the hill just to my over my right shoulder here. So if we were to go straight over where those trees are and down the other side, the cairn is just over there. Our next stop is going to see the Macbeth Well. The well is thought to be where King Macbeth and his men would have stopped to get a drink before the Battle of Lim Fannin. We don't know if this is actually true. He very well might have had water at that spot. It might just be a story that they tell the, the local travelers. Uh, we don't actually know, but it's a cool story. So we'll go see the but well. We do know that Macbeth died just right over there. Right there. And that um, this is the true place of his uh, of his final moments yes yes okay Castle is 
a ruined 16th century tower house, which looks south over the glen of the Course Burn towards Course Hill. Course belonged to the Forbes family from at least the 15th century when King James III created the barony of O'Neill in 1476, giving David Forbes, his armor bearer, the lands of Course, along with Kincardin and Cull. It was David's grandson, William, who built the castle at Course in its current form, following an earlier tower's destruction in a raid. Above the doorway are the initials WF, the date 1581, and the initials ES, commemorating the construction of the castle and the names of William Forbes and Elizabeth Strachan. It's not clear what form the first tower took, but the tower of course today is a rather unusual design combining elements of a Scottish L and Z-shaped castles, which leads those who understand such things to believe that it incorporates the earlier work. William had four sons, one of whom, Patrick, was born in the old tower, and was to become Bishop of Aberdeen and the Laird after his father's death. Patrick died in Corse Castle in 1648, and his son George inherited the lands and title. After this, it's not clear what happened to Corse, but it remained within the wider Forbes family until its destruction at some unknown date. (laughs) 